Okay, this podcast is going to be about uh, kind of a continuing series on the uh, hero's journey that I've been doing. And this particular episode will focus on Barack Obama, who I know people have kind of strong opinions about. And you could certainly argue, uh, you know, if he's done a good job or not. I know some people downright despise the guy. But uh, I think that anybody that's sort of looking at this situation, at least in a somewhat objective way, understands his story is very interesting especially from the uh, the hero's journey kind of standpoint because it, it's it's very, well, very untraditional in terms of, of what we might expect from someone in, in the political world, you know. Uh, but, but we're going to get into that a little bit more. But um, So I think it's interesting, before we get into the actual steps of the hero's journey, just to give you a little background, we know he was born in Hawaii, although that is also under dispute, but uh, but he did spend his first few years there. And, you know, his mom uh, married somebody named Lolo, and they moved to Indonesia. Okay, and then this is where a lot of the controversy about, uh, you know, his, his being a Muslim or whatever. But he did live there, and he did learn from this man who was a Muslim. And he learned a lot from him, and he became kind of the father figure in Barack's life. And that was until he was 10 or so, and, his, and Lolo and his mother divorced. And, and Barack returned to Hawaii to live with his grandparents. And so he was mainly raised by his grandparents, and and you know, and, and I think you take that book, Dreams from His Dreams from My Father. We're going to talk a little bit, a little bit about that as we go on here. But uh, he he knows a white stepfather who kind of is raising him, but he's hearing he's heard these legends about his father, and he's very curious, and he's built him up in, into something in his mind, and it's something that a lot of people do with absentee fathers, especially even adopt kids do that often, kind of dreaming and thinking about who that person might be. Um, so and he does, he does meet his dad once during, during his childhood, and his dad stays with the family in Hawaii for a month. And so Barack kind of imagines that he's, he's this amazing man that goes back. And this is going to be a very key component in the hero's journey in his life. But in, in his own life, he goes into a little bit of a tailspin. Uh, he completes high school in Hawaii, and he has experienced some racism. He he sort of gets interested in Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, and he's kind of angry and experiments with drugs and alcohol, uh, goes to school in L.A., and eventually is accepted into Columbia. And while he's there as a student, he realizes that, or he gets a call that his dad's been killed in a car accident. So you can imagine. Now Freud said that the biggest event in a in a man's life is the death of his father. So uh, with all this in mind, I think this is a good place to kind of start. At least the way I wrote this in my book on the subject, where I kind of started to conceptualize his hero's journey. And the first step is the call to adventure. And for Barack, this was something. Uh, it was kind of a movement from kind of anger and this sort of chip on your shoulder kind of guy to somebody that realized that he actually had a bit of a calling. So uh, he learns a little bit about grassroots organization, uh, you know, the uh, oft-ridiculed uh, term community organizer, but it's it's true. He really does get into the streets of Chicago and, and starts organizing people, and he's learning how to do that. Now, of course, the uh, second step, and one that really goes hand-in-hand hand with the call to adventure, is the Herald. And the Herald in, in in Joseph Campbell's work is somebody that is a mentor, and often in in you know in Campbell's work of mythology, this is uh, somebody from with kind of a supernatural sense or something like that. But in everyday life, we often have people like this in our lives too that have kind of taken us under their wing or has come around in a, at a point in our lives that that turned out to be very significant and taught us and and really kind of modeled things to us and. So for Brock, this is a man named Marty Kaufman, who was a little white Jewish guy who had spent a lot of his life on the south side of Chicago organizing people, which was was interesting to Brock because, you know, he's a man that's, especially if, if for those that have been to the south side of Chicago, this is kind of a rare thing, a little white Jewish guy that's become like this interested in grassroots organizations. So, but Brock learns a lot from him. And one of the key things he learns is that churches are a huge part of mobilizing people. And it's something that helped him get elected, quite frankly. Uh, but it is it is uh, where some of the roots of his organization came. So regardless of what you think about him, one of the ways that he won the presidential election was his organization was so powerful. Uh, they were able to raise a ton of money 
and they were able to really get the word out, and they did a way better job of that than the other Democratic candidates did. So, uh, and then the road of trial starts, and so uh, the road of trial is kind of, so Barack's coming along when Harold Washington's the mayor of Chicago, and this is uh, in 1983, and the city of Chicago is very polarized. It's very much, uh, even even a very racially divided thing, where uh, the city has kind of been run by the original Mayor Daley, and uh, very much a... Uh, no, the Chicago politics is very crooked. There's no other way to say it. And it's very much uh, kind of you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours kind of thing. And, you know, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Everyone that knows Chicago knows that's true. And so Marty had taught Brock that you have to appeal to people's self-interest to get them. People don't rarely do things out of the goodness of their hearts. You have to actually sort of make them think it's going to be worth their while. And so he's learned that, and he's learned how to give a speech in these churches, and he's learned sort of the art of showmanship in these black churches on the south side of Chicago. But he's had a lot, he has a lot of failures. He's, uh, you know, he's young and he's idealistic, but he realizes that, you know, when he comes up against this kind of thing in Chicago, the corruption, the, the kind of inside kind of thing, that it was... Uh, you know, it, it, it was going to be bigger than he thought he did. It, it was. And that's a lot of people that are trying to make a change kind of confront this step. It's uh, like this change is going to be bigger and harder work than I thought. So that kind of sums up the road of trials in Barack's life. Uh, now, the next step is really, I just think, just so huge, especially in Obama's life. It actually might be the sort of guiding light in his life. And this this is called the atonement with the father. So he has this very powerful father, uh, or so he thinks, in Kenya, and then he actually starts learning some facts about his dad. He learns his dad is really not that good of a guy, and he's had a ton of disappointments and bad relationships and alcoholism and all kinds of failures. And Barack, it didn't jive at all with this uh, information that he had about his dad and, and what he had created in his head. So uh, it, it was very, it's a very interesting thing for a man to confront that uh, and I think it can work in two ways. One, you kind of see that your dad is a human being with the same kind of fallibilities and vulnerabilities that you, that you, that you have and everyone has. But also, like, as a black man, he that was his template. So now he had to sort of recalibrate exactly w what he had built this whole house of, house of cards on. So he really kind of began to think about what his place really was in the world. And in a way, again, he talked about it as being kind of liberating, not having to live up to those expectations, which existed primarily, primarily in his own mind. Uh, so crossing the first threshold for, for Barack was uh, in, the, in the area of Roseland in Chicago, which is kind of a really rough place in the south side. And he spent years uh, getting a Met Center open there because of some transportation issues, and the mayor came himself, and it was something very tangible to show for all the work he'd been putting in. Uh, it was a very underserved area in terms of transportation. So that was a big deal. But still we don't see at this point the kind of Barack Obama that, that we know now as, as president. Um, so for him, one of these big, big turning points was his trip to Africa. And this is detailed at length in, in both of his books. Um, but he went there and he saw the racism. It wasn't just like racism in America where it's a little bit more subtle. It was very blatantly not being served uh, by waiters and that, that would rush to serve white people and the real subjugation of women in the country and so he really kind of learns this lesson but but not just a lesson but something that that gave him this completely new understanding of human nature and this like again this this step in the in in Campbell's hero's journey is called the apothesis and for Barack he talks about this period in Africa as something that, as a mixed-race person, he began to uh, sort of not think about himself in this dichotomy. But, but uh, you know, I think for anyone that's traveled a lot, uh, travel can really do that to you. It can really sort of lead you to this much deeper understanding about your place in the world. And uh, the next step is marriage, which for Barack was also a very, very huge step. Uh, Michelle was older than he was. She was a lawyer in a firm he worked at, but... but but ahead of him, so it was a little bit odd as a young guy for her to be dating him. You know, he was he was behind her. It was like a senior dating a freshman or something like that. And uh, he still credits sort of the sense of groundedness and the humility 
he has from her kind of keeping him in check. And you see them on TV, and you know, you know, again, regardless of what you think of them, I think uh, very few people would dispute that he seems to be a very good family man. Uh, you know, a lot of presidents have these kind of whispers about, you know, other women in affairs and stuff. You really just don't hear that kind of thing with a Barack. So uh, you have to give him credit for that, I think. Um, so now we kind of, uh, a continuation is sort of like the, the journey to the sword where he decides after some, you know, he signed up over 10,000 voters on the south side of Chicago. So that's been kind of his main thing. He's a civil rights lawyer at this point, and he's, he's gotten a job teaching constitutional law at the University of Chicago. So, you know, he's, he's actually kind of made some very firm strides in his career. But here's where things have really taken a turn. In 2000, he decides to take on Bobby Rush, who is a Chicago fixture on the south side. Of, and he is somebody that knows the ins and outs of the political machine probably better than anybody. And he's a former Black Panther, and he just kicks Barack's ass. And so Barack realizes that maybe he didn't think this through as, as much as he thought. So uh, then in 2004, he decides he's going to run for the Senate. And there's some big names in this thing. Blair Hull, Dan Hines, Jack Ryan on the Republican side. And he's got the name Barack Obama. Now, just to put this in perspective, Barack, uh, you know, it, it, just, it just conjures up Osama bin Laden and it conjures up uh, Hussein is also in his name. Yeah, that's his middle name. So, But Jack Ryan gets kind of embroiled in a, in a sexual scandal and he beats both the Democrats and he wins the Senate seat, which uh, for him just rep represents this huge kind of transition from a sort of a local politician to somebody that's now on a national stage. And this gets very much more apparent when he gives the keynote speech in, in, at the, election, at the um, Democratic Convention in 2004 for John Kerry. And this is when he's now on the national radar. And so all of this will kind of set him on the course to becoming president, which, of course, is kind of the ultimate boom. But we'll see. You know, in, in some people's lives, and I, I would argue, like, for instance, Jimmy Carter, that probably the most productive period of his life came after his presidency. And it seems like Clinton has really devoted himself to being kind of a post-presidency uh, advocate as well. And even, even the former George Bush and Clinton have worked uh, together as well. So uh, it's interesting. But in terms of his presidency, and re again, regardless of what you think about it, uh, it was the culmination of so many lessons that he had learned. So this is kind of the epitome of the hero's journey. You failed. Uh, you found some partners, uh, mentors. Uh, again, this sort of marriage part of it plays deeply into it. But you, all of these things uh, have have made a contribution to you kind of seizing this ultimate boom, which which is winning the presidency incredibly improbably in, in many ways. Uh, considering Hillary, Hillary Clinton was in the race, who, you know, obviously uh, with her husband and having been there before it was a huge, huge hurdle to climb. Uh, to me, his name, his race, obviously. Um, and so that was kind of the ultimate boom. And, and so if you look at his life in terms of the hero's journey, now he's a reasonably young man. And so time will tell exactly how this story ends. Uh, the hero's journey at times can repeat itself. Uh, someone can be forced back into at least at least by my reading of it uh it's not something that necessarily just ends uh for barack he may have to relearn some of these lessons uh frankly it's, it seems like he's gotten away from some of these lessons he learned as a community organizer when he was kind of taking it to the streets and then some of that is just politics and business as usual and, and whatever but uh, with another election coming up, I think it's very interesting to see how much he will have to kind of retap into those things he'd learned on the earlier part of his hero's journey because it's going to be a real dogfight. I mean, America is very deeply divided about the kind of job he's done. So time will tell. But again, it's really a fascinating story. And in terms of just kind of taking your own emotions and political opinions out of it, uh, I think it's it really makes for a very interesting biography, and I think it fits so well with the hero's journey because he he, he just seemed to take so many of the steps. So that's Barack Obama, and again, I'm just condensing it. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about this, please do check out my book. It's very cheap, and it's on Amazon, 
and uh, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much.